Good. The brother asked two questions and he had how to maintain the balance and the focus in the prayer and then if you're distracted, what to do. A lot of the things, Ya Khwan, like I mentioned in the khutbah, people don't realize, uh, actually I have a course that I did about this. Maybe we can do it one time, inshallah. I was talking with Sheikh Muhammad recently about it. But how to obtain the pleasure in the prayer. I even did a TV show about it, Who the TV, in 29 episodes. So it's really, it's an in-depth subject. Uh, however, many of the introductions that we talked about is the actual muqaddimat. The introductions and the things that happen before the prayer have a huge effect on what happens inside of the prayer. We don't realize this. For example, one of the issues that I didn't mention in the khutbah today, but the issue of uh, the heart and the corruption of the heart. I mentioned a bit about it, but if you want to look in detail about the issue of the heart. If we had this bottle here, and I asked Sheikh Muhammad to pour water inside of it. Now it's completely closed. Is any water going to go in? He's going to pour the, uh, a whole bunch of water. A gallon of water. No water is going to go in. Why? Because it's completely sealed. So also our hearts from all of the sins and the evil deeds that we're doing, can, it's completely sealed as well. So the khair and the good of the prayer is not coming in because of the, the effect of the, uh, the, the, how the, the heart has been corrupted outside of the prayer. So a lot of these things, uh, we say coming early to the prayer, even how you dress in the prayer has an effect on you. You'll, you'll find a lot of times when somebody is new in the gym, what does he have when he works out? He brings all the stuff, even in his bag, he has all the stuff that you don't need. A person who's old in the gym, he knows you don't really need these things. They're in a kamaliyat. But you'll find that he's buying all of these things, so he thinks, and he's got you know, all the correct gear on, all the correct clothes, and he, you know, he, and he wants to get into the gym. because. So, but it has an impact. Even the kids now, when they play football, they believe if they have the good shoes, that they're going to play, play, they're gonna play better. And that's, it's, it, has a, well, it has a mental effect on you. I remember back in the day when we used to buy the Jordans, we used to play basketball, it had a big impact on us. We thought we, thought we could play a little bit better, you know? You put the tongue out like Mike and you have the, the Jordans and you think you're playing better than what you are. Well, like when you come to the prayer, and Allah told us this in the Quran, masjid, to make sure that you look good, you have nice clothes on when you come to the masjid. Make sure you smell good when you come to... Nowadays, say, hey, just go into Salat. It's, the toes wrinkle a little. I have some, some sauce, some ketchup from the, from the burger I was eating before. Ma shiach. It's, it's not a big deal. It's only Salat. But if you're going to some... Uh, I can't stand in front of Allah like this. Let me go change. Make sure I smell good. I have my perfume on. This has an impact. So all of these things that we do before the Salat, coming early, praying two rakats, making some istighfar, making some dua, going into... And, and, and that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he also showed us this. In the hadith, when he said, and this is a big mistake we make sometimes, what are we supposed to do if we walk into the prayer and the iqamah is made? Huh? The brother said, don't run. Who says we run? So we can catch the first takbir. We don't want to miss the first rakah. But what do most people do? They run. Even if they, or if they, or they walk very fast. So like we said, everybody, the Muslims today are in very good shape, mashallah. So after they walk very fast or run or jog until they get to, into the salat, you go... He's, 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 out, he's, 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 he's huffing and puffing and he can't concentrate on the prayer. So coming early and doing these things, it has also what, a, a, a good impact. Then what do we do now in the prayer? And also, like I said, understanding. Many times we pray for 20, 30 years and it's just the movements and the statements without understanding any of the meanings or understanding why or even reflecting. Once we understand these things, then you're going to find what? That it gives life to the prayer. And some of the things, for example, a lot of times there's many sunnahs that are in the prayer. Many different sunnahs that have been confirmed. But yet we do one sunnah. Look, for example, go home and take Hisn al-Muslim, which all of us should have with us at all times. At least on our phones if we don't have it in our pocket, the book itself. How many dua for istiftah is there? Several duas. How many duas do we know? One. We say it for 60 years in our salah. That's the only thing we say. And well, if, I, if I ask you to say it now... You probably couldn't say it unless you did take beer and said it. Because it's just like a custom. We just do it. So there's no really life in the prayer. This is one of the problems as well. So doing different things, that, that, that gives life to the prayer. These are all like introduction things and some things during the prayer like the sunnahs. Now what do you do? A forgotten sunnah. That if shaitan comes to you during the prayer and distracts you, what should you do? Spit, you said? Is it spit or is it? Because what if somebody's praying next to you? And you spit on him. Huh? Almost. You're almost there. <laughs> huh? I mean, it's not really a spit. It's more like of an of a, of a air. You know, you, three times on, on thing, you could say, Audu Billah Mashaitan Rajim, as one, and then you can say, like that. 
They're very light on, on the left-hand side, three times. Now we actually no spit will actually come out. But it's more like, a, like a, uh, an air, like a blowing. Like, like that three times on the left-hand side. So this, obviously, when shaitan's got you, and people are like shy to do it now. Even some of us, we know the sunnah, we like, uh, people think I'm weird or something if I do it right. So this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That now shaitan, he's got me. Khalas, he beat me. He's got two rakats on me. I want to make sure I get these next two. I'm going to come back. Huh? He knocked me down the first two, the first two rounds. I'm coming back in round two, uh, three and four. Huh? And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get back on track. And that's what the brother's asking now. So to get back on track, I'm going to say what? And that, that takes you out of the... the, the and he, you're supposed to be concentrating. He took you off. He distracted you. This helps you uh, to come back. These are one of the tips, inshallah ta'ala, to uh, be able to, f- to focus on in the prayers and to help you gain focus once you lose focus in the prayer. And this is from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.